Well, are you tired of being chained to past pain? Troy Brewer reveals how God can redeem your timeline and heal the hurt to set you free. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Time, it's possibly the most precious commodity we have. We only have a limited amount of it. And like sand, it can easily slip through our hands. It also holds all the moments of our life, including the traumatic ones. But is it possible to redeem those moments? Well, today, with the help of our special guests, we'll find out. But first, joining around the table is April Simons. You know, I'm glad that Jesus is our Redeemer. Oh, me too. Yeah. And, and don't you feel like as you get older, we're not old, but as we get older, time no, goes more faster. Mature, more <laughs> yes. mature, wiser. Yeah. As we get wiser, it, yeah. It goes so fast, oh, you know? That's yeah. exactly right. It really does. Mm. It really does. Anna Kendall? We don't necessarily get older. We get more seasoned. <laughs> yeah, seasoned. <laughs> I yes. am Good well answer. seasoned. <laughs> That's right. And you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. De Havilland Ford. Uh, I'm so excited about this topic because time is such a precious commodity. It and really I'm excited is. to hear yes. what he's going to share on today's program. going to be good. Cindy Murdoch. Yes. And when I think about time, I realize how intentional we have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because it passes so yeah. fast. I love my new chairs, y'all. Like I can just <laughs> yeah. swing around to Cindy and swing around over there to April. Okay. <laughs> just not share that with you. Well, he is the pastor of Open Door Church in Burleson, Texas. He's here to talk about how the Lord can redeem your timeline. Please welcome Pastor Troy Brewer. Hello, girls. Hello. 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 follows you. <laughs> and we have like some blocks here. Yeah. And I don't know somehow they're going to work into this message today. So what exactly is time? Why did God create it? And can God transform it once it's passed? These are the questions that Troy tackles in his book, Redeeming Your Timeline. And today he's here to unpack that for us. He usually says right on a few times, so get ready for that. How are you doing, <laughs> Pastor Troy? I'm doing very well. Thank you, ma'am. I am. I'm doing great. It's, Why did you write this book, Redeeming the Time? Well, it's just a big part of my journey mm -hmm. with the Lord. Um, God likes to deal with me in a sense. Uh, number one, everybody has to deal with time. So we need to learn how to have mastery with time. Mm -hmm. And typically when people learn how to have mastery with time, they're just thinking about time management. I'm, I'm talking about, man, we gotta get good at working time because all of us have to deal with it. Yeah. 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 And so I saw a big need in the body of Christ and just people in general to understand what time is, how time works, and the miracle that can happen within time. We're encapsulated in time. That's correct. Mm -hmm. But God is not. He is right. not subject yeah. to time so whatsoever. Grateful. He actually created <laughs> yes. time. It, just like this is a made up thing right here. Um, it's part of all matter, you know, time, space, and matter. You cannot separate it. Mm -hmm. um, God created time. I he, remember he when um, I've interviewed people that have had near death experiences mm -hmm. and they have died, I mean, one man for six hours and went to heaven, came back. It wasn't his time. He actually didn't go into heaven, but he died. Anyway, great story. You'll have to look that up. But anyway, um, the thing about time is that we feel like enclosed by it. But people that have gone on to heaven, so many have said this, that when thinking about their loved ones or family, they always felt they were only seconds behind them mm -hmm. because that would because yeah. they, they're not encapsulated in time mm -hmm. like we are here. I thought that was very interesting. I love that. No, you know, I, I agree that, it, like, in one sense, um, Brother Marcus has already been with the Lord 10 gazillion, gazillion years. And in another sense, he That's just That's my now, husband that yeah. passed away a little over a year ago. Yeah, yes. he's with the Lord. We know that. And so they're, they're not encapsulated by time. They're like not. They no, they're not subject to time. And so um, you and I are subject to time right now. Mm -hmm. But once we're face-to-face -face with the Lord, um, every created thing, we are no longer subject to those things, mm -hmm. including time. Yeah. You know, you do say time is a gift from God. It is a gift from God. Because time is the only place, Joni, that you can say that was then and this is now and I have a chance for a new future. Mm -hmm. So time was created, I believe, for the purposes of redemption. 
That's so good. And so we know what redemption is. Redemption is when God comes in and changes something that's all messed up and replaces it with something much, much, much better. Yes. And you're saying that God can come in and change our past by redeeming that time. Yes, ma'am. He can change. Oh, I love that. You know, we always believe God that, that we can, that he can give us a new future. He can right. even give us a new past because that. he's that's not subject great. to time. What was that? You had a particular sign that happened in your life that really kind of got you on this track of um, kind of understanding uh, that time was, you know, God's way of keeping everything from happening all at once. But, but what was the thing that happened that made you start thinking about the subject? Well, um, I was playing in a rock band, a Christian rock band, but we were in um, Austin, Texas, and we were down there on 6th Street, and I was in a my A rock early, band, huh? Yeah, but yeah. Guitar. Listen, I rock I your face off. I never don't, knew that. Don't think that I can't rock your face off. You can I can. still do it. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. And awesome. uh, something else. So, anyway, we were down there, we were jamming, and I was getting ready to do one of my magnificent leads, and I was getting ready and I looked up behind the bar, there was a sign and the sign said, time is God's way from keeping everything from happening at once. Now, I love that. I was like, wait, wait a minute, why doesn't God want everything to happen yeah. at once? Why don't we just get it all over with? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, why would God do that? Like, and, and so I missed my lead. It came up from my lead and I was sitting there and I was like, what? Pondering. And I was pondering and I totally missed my lead. You and went to another time. And another I went, time. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. And uh, I had to get back with the program, but it started something in me where I'm like, I need to seek this out because I know that I have a timeline and I begin to discover all kinds of things about time. I begin to order books on time. I begin to read about time. I begin to get into physics. I begin to get off into how all that works. And then once I begin to see it there, I begin to see it biblically. Mm -hmm. And I begin to look at time through a Christian worldview and it set me free in so many different ways, I can't wow. even tell you, but it started, wow. it started me on that journey. Okay, it. well you have these blocks before us. Okay. So describe, um, Okay. Why you have them there? <laughs> okay, <laughs> because I like playing with blocks. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. So um, I was sitting at a train track in Joshua, Texas, which is a common experience if you live there. And it's a miserable experience because in Texas, the trains are so long. Right. And I am very much, I got to get to the next place kind of yeah. guy. And I was sitting at the train track and the train was so long that I could no longer see the engine and I could no longer see the caboose. And I started to just complain in my spirit, like, why do I got to sit here by this silly train every single day? And instantly I had a supernatural encounter with God Almighty. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't praying about it. I wasn't even thinking about it. But instantly the spirit of the Lord filled up my truck and I went, uh-oh, something's fixing to happen. <laughs> And I imagined from my spirit and saw that I was above the train, mm -hmm. not sitting there. And I could actually see in my mind's eye, I could see my little truck down there. And I was like several thousand feet above the train. And above the train, I could see the engine and I could also see the caboose and I could see my truck about, about right here. From that perspective, I could only see one piece of a car passing at one time, but from above, I could see the beginning and the end and the middle all at the same time. Mm -hmm. awesome. And I instantly knew that's how God sees mm -hmm. my timeline and the timeline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I knew that, and as soon as I understood it, I also knew this. If I'm down here on the ground, I can only enter into one piece of a car at a time. But God, from his perspective in heaven, can enter into any part of the train he wants to mm -hmm. at his leisure. He can enter in and he can also enter out. Mm -hmm. And uh, he can also exit in or out. That's pretty good. So this is like our life. This is our life. From this the is, beginning to so the end. So let's say that this is the begin. This let's say that this is the day that I was born, and let's say that this is the day that I die. And let's just believe I'm right here in the middle somehow. Even even though I'm, I'm, I'm I just turned 56. I'll put it back in the middle. So okay, how late? So let's say that this is where I am. What's real is God sees the moment I was born. He sees the moment I'm taking my last breath. He sees the day I was graduating high school, the day I got hitched, the day we had our first baby, the day we had our first grandbaby. He sees all those things mm -hmm. all at the same exact time. So John Paul Jackson, you know, used to say yes. that God sees past, present, and future simultaneously. As he does. Yeah. And so that's really what you're saying. Is I that am saying he that. He sees everything, wow. and that's kind of hard for us to comprehend sometimes. It is. Um, so what works for me to be able to understand this 
is that let's say God is above the train of time and we're talking about a linear timeline. And by the way, times are different from seasons. Seasons are, cir- are cyclical and they return over and over and over again, mm-hmm. but timelines are linear. Okay, so we're talking about a linear timeline. So this is the day that Adam fell. Mm-hmm. Now it's not, our time does not begin the day that Adam was born or the day that God created Adam, I should say, but it begins the day that he dies. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's real important, and we can talk about that. So this is the day that Adam fell right here, and it begins the timeline, and this is the great white throne judgment. So this is how it works. In the, in the creation story, there's the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and the seventh day. In the human timeline, you basically have 2,000 years to Abraham, 2,000 years to Jesus, 2,000 years to now, which means... We're about to enter into the seventh day. A day is to the Lord is a thousand years. And we're about to enter into the seventh day, which means the return of King Jesus and the great white throne judgment. So we are literally on the timeline right here towards the last day. It's important to understand that. Wow. Well, you, in your book, you talk about the difference between redeemed time and unredeemed time. So tell us about that. In the sense of unredeemed time, we are losing everything. We're, we're losing absolutely everything. As a matter of fact, the day that you're born, you begin to die. Right, yeah. In the sense of redeemed time, we are gaining everything. And even in the Word of God, how the, how, the Bible is, how the Bible is stated, if it says, now when the fullness of time had come, it's talking about redeemed time. But if it says that when the time had passed, it's talking about unredeemed time. Mm -hmm. And so within unredeemed time, you see tremendous loss. You see, man, you're losing everything. And in in redeemed time, you're gaining everything. So what you're saying in that kind of simple terms is that for those of you watching, that when you don't have a relationship with God and the one who created you, and you're you're not in an intimate relationship with him, then... um, you're really living in unredeemed time because you really can't fulfill the purpose that God has for you if you don't know him. And so for people watching, how important is it for them to have a relationship with him so that he can not only redeem their soul, but redeem their life to fulfill their purpose on the earth today? Well, it's everything. And that's why he didn't let everything happen at the same time so that we would have a chance to discover him. So why don't you just take a moment, uh, Pastor Troy, and talk to our audience, explain um, the plan of salvation, and then give us an opportunity to pray with people who are watching. I would love to. Friends, I want to tell you, you might have an idea what you think that the gospel of Jesus Christ is, but it turns out what I find is most people don't know. They know a tradition of it, or they know something like that. But did you know that the gospel of Jesus Christ says this, that you can have hope in any situation, that you can have life in the midst of, in the midst of any experience of death because of the presence of Jesus. Jesus is the one who brings us life, and you know what? He's just a call away. He literally knows you. He sees you, but you know what? Nobody can choose Jesus for you. You have to choose him. If you invite him into your timeline, it changes your entire timeline from where everything is a total loss to where you gain everything. Only Jesus can do that. He is the keeper of the key of time because he is the inventor of the key of time. Maybe right now you're sitting in some place where you're just going, man, I, all I've seen is loss and tragedy. And I want to just tell you this, we're all sorry for that. We're not, we're not making light of that. I mean, those things are so real. But I can also tell you this too, that Jesus Christ has already overcome all those things and he can walk with you every single step of the way through your timeline to bring you to a point to where finally you step into life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pray with you. Just just repeat after me. You can do this. Say, Father God, God, I need you you. in my life, in in all of my life, life. and I'm asking you to please forgive me and set me free and and bring your power power through Jesus Jesus into me. me. In Jesus' name, name. amen. 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 And what can people expect by praying that prayer? What they can expect is for things to change. There is, just like in our own timeline. Wait, does God start, start redeeming the time after that He can. Prayer. He, he absolutely <laughs> yeah. does. What's real is, it's not too late to deal with your past now. Mm-hmm. We think that it is, but Jesus is not subject to time. And once you begin to understand that the Lord was there with you all the time, and once you begin to see him there with you, it changes your perspective of everything. 
Yeah. Okay, Tori, so let's say someone was abused very badly mm -hmm. as a child and carried that wound throughout and maybe dealt with it to some degree. How do they go back and have Jesus in that experience? If you can ask Jesus into your right now, right. you can also ask Jesus into your back then. Okay, mm -hmm. so he would come in and by redeeming the time, does that change your emotions? It, doesn't change, it doesn't change what happened. It changes this. It becomes more about his presence than what was stolen from you. Okay. Yeah, that's good. What, what about your friend Scotty and the lesson you wow. learned there about redeeming power? Oh, my good friend Scotty. Oh, I just love him so much. You know, I was Tell always... Tell us about Scotty. Scotty McKay <laughs> is a, a world-famous musician, and uh, I actually played in his band and um, all kinds of crazy stuff, and he was a world-famous musician and, and did all kinds of amazing things. And one thing that he told me, of course, I was in my 20s. He was in his 50s, so I thought he was old then. You know? <laughs> oh, had no idea how young being yes. in his 50s actually was. <laughs> but he, he told me, he said, man, there's only one thing in the world I'm scared of. I don't, I don't want to die all by myself. And I was like, man, you won't. Don't worry, bro, you're not going to. And then come to find out, he actually, while he was in the studio working on my album, he he just had a heart attack and just killed over and died. And the first thing I asked was, I said, was he by himself? And they were like, yes. And I was like, oh, no. And I just cried out to the Lord and cried out to the Lord and cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, why did you let that happen? And all of a sudden it occurred to me, the Lord is not subject to time. He knew I was going to say this prayer. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he answered it before I prayed it, so I need to pray it. And I said, King Jesus, would you please be with my good friend in the last moments of his life and make that the most mm. incredible encounter with you that he's ever had? Because he knew the Lord. Because yes. he, he knew loved the Lord. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And I instantly knew Scotty was not alone. Yeah. The Lord was with him. Yes. So good. Amen. There you go. You know, I, I look everything. at your little train right there. And I think about people who are stuck maybe right there in the middle in a moment of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're struggling. They're struggling maybe with past abuse or whatever. And they don't realize that God knows the end from the beginning. He sees the way out. He's working behind mm -hmm. the scenes. And so it's not just the time of our life. I mean, right. you can take that down to the moments right now that That's people right. are struggling, that mm -hmm. they don't see a way, to out, way out, but God sees the way out. Jesus is the door of the sheep, he says. Mm -hmm. And, you know, according to Isaiah 20, 22, he actually, he actually can hand you a key mm -hmm. and says, I'm going to give you a key to this thing. You had no idea how to get out of this, or how to step into a blessed place. When Jesus steps into your timeline, he will literally make things new and say, I want to show you a different way now. Yeah. Yes. And that only comes from, from King Jesus. And this is so good because it gives us a greater trust. Because I think especially in this generation, we feel like we're racing against time. But if you understand God knows the end from the beginning, oh, so you good. can trust him with your time. Yeah. So I just mm -hmm. think, for especially for younger people, mm -hmm. you know, there's this thing, well, I don't want to get older. And there's a lot of suicide around that. Mm -hmm. So this just gives such a clarity that we can trust God with our time is so amazing. You know, and I, th I really feel like there are people watching that um, you've really lived time in doing your own things and you've really missed out on a lot of what God wanted to do with your life. And you may believe that, well, you know, I've made mistakes. There's no way God can redeem the time. But, but God is saying to you today that he can redeem yes. the time if you're willing to surrender your heart and life to him. I know many of you prayed that, that prayer just a moment ago, but um, what would you say to people uh, in understanding that that's a lie from the enemy and that, that God can come in right now yes. and change everything around and uh, do something really amazing in their life if they're willing to surrender? Because, you know, the, the safest and happiest and most wonderful place in the world is in the will of God. And you can't be in the will of God when you don't have him on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that if you would bring Jesus and if you would surrender to King Jesus, the, one of the first things that he will show you is that you have a right now with him and that he has a future for you. And then what he'll start to show you is that nothing in your past is wasted because in the kingdom, there's nothing wasted. So nothing. Good. Yes. Nothing is ever wasted in the kingdom. And that's such a good point yes. because a lot of people think, well, I went through this, this, and this, mm -hmm. but that's what that's part of what God redeems. Right. Mm -hmm. He uses those mistakes that you made yes. and to help other people. That's right. And I've seen him do yes. that so many times. But there, there's somebody watching right now that you just keep resisting the call of God on your life. And um, I mean, you feel the presence of God right now as you're sitting here listening to us. And, and God is just saying, you know, today is the day. I mean, mm -hmm. for you to pray that prayer and say, okay, God, 
I'm not going to do it my way. I mm -hmm. want to do it your way. And I'm just going to tell you, it's going to be like a 180 for you. You're going to be amazed at what God's going to do in your life. But um, why is it so hard for some people to give up that control? But when there's freedom on the other side of it, well, for, for a lot of us, <clears throat> it's that we, it's hard for us to believe that God is that good because we know how bad we are. Yeah. Right. And we know how messed up our timeline is. Mm -hmm. And we know how many wasted years there were and then all the bad choices we made. The offer and the good news and the gospel of King Jesus is he's like, yes, I'll take all of that. I'll step into every single bit of it. I'm not afraid to invite Jesus into any single part of my timeline because I believe he loves my humanity. He doesn't hate my humanity mm -hmm. and he doesn't hate anybody else's humanity that is watching. Um, I got a scripture here. Joni, you're going to love this. This is Psalms 139 verse 5 and this is from the Passion Translation. Okay, and you're going to love, this is crazy. It says this, you've gone into my future to prepare the way and in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the harms of my past. Wow. And with your hand of love upon me, you impart a blessing unto me. Yeah. So it goes future tense, past tense, present tense. It's all Jesus, but we have to, we have to invite him in. I'm just thinking about that scripture because so many people I think that are watching may feel like the past is going to stop them from doing mm -hmm. it's not true. what God has for them. Or I've messed up so bad. You know, I had a, a relative one time, he said, if I can just get my life together, then I can accept Jesus. Not understanding that God will take care of all that past. Yes. And you'll never get it together. And you'll yeah. never. <laughs> you right. just got to come yeah. as you are. That's yes. Right. I think about the supernatural, because some people are, this is going to be hard. How do I accept Jesus into my life? How, do, how does he become the Lord of my life? Well, it is such a supernatural encounter and the supernatural doing that it's, it's beyond, I think, our mind and ability to understand how the Lord Jesus Christ comes and becomes the Lord of our life when we accept him. Yeah. yeah. yeah you don't have to have all this figured out. You yeah. just have to have it figured out that you need Jesus in this. Yes. Yeah. And then he will make all of this work, your past, your present, and also your future. Mm. Yeah, and and you know, that we can go back in our past and it can be redeemed. Yeah, any place that I feel shame in my past, I invite Jesus into that. Okay. That is so good. You know, I remember our dear friend Rhonda Davis, that was part of the inner healing that she went through. She and her husband um, divorced. He's very abusive. He was running from the call of God on his life. And he just, she had terrible memories. She lived in California. And uh, particularly the house that they lived in, there were some bad things that took mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And um, she uh, ended up divorcing him, moving back to Tennessee. Then he got miraculously saved. Yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and she didn't believe it. She was like, there's no way. I don't believe it. And he was better than so, bad. <laughs> I know. So he, he was called into ministry. He became an evangelist. He ministered for two years and believed God for her. But she just could not, could not, could not believe it. But part during that two years that they were divorced, God did a work of inner healing in her heart. And one of the things she tells about is like in a vision where he took her to that house and mm -hmm. she went in the kitchen and Jesus was like, okay, I was here. Mm -hmm. Like he went back in time yep. and yeah. showed her that he was there. Yes. And then he said, now let's go to the room, which was the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And that's the place she didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, no, come, come with me. And they walked back into the bedroom and he said, and I was here. And anyway, it's more to the story, but God healed her yes. and then actually brought them back together and they were married another 30-something years. Wow. Yeah. But that's what God can do, no matter do. what has happened. Surrender was hard for you, I mean, oh, it was. at first, Anna. What yes. was kind of the, the change where you just I would made say that, that the main thing was I saw the reality of God in Fred's life. I knew that's that your Fred, husband. That's my husband. I knew he could not have changed that much. He was this hard charging, lead fall, get out of the way Marine. And <laughs> Tell was, everybody when y'all first got married your list. He, oh, he made a list. He made a Put list. We came bed. back from our honeymoon and he made a list and, and he woke me up at five in the morning and he said, Sweetheart, here's your list. And it said, Wake up, have coffee, rolls. Then it said, have sex. And, oh, and it gave timelines. Oh, 500, coffee <laughs> rolls. Oh, oh, 530, you know, sex. And then oh, five, 
40 shower. And I looked at that. Yeah, exercise in there, yeah, too. Yeah, oh, exercise was in there, calisthenics. The and I looked at that, and I said, <laughs> you've got to be kidding. And I threw that yeah. away, and that went, I went back to sleep. That was his first clue that we were going to have problems. Yeah, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he, you know, in the midst of all of our worldliness, he changed. Yeah. And, and I, it was from a prayer, like what we just talked about. It was a prayer, about. just like this. And then when he changed, and God really revealed that to me, and I did your grandfather's prayer, oh God, if you're really there, yeah. and if you really see all this, I'll try this Christianity. I want to tell him the part where he'd put the, by the way, y'all don't know what this is, yeah. do the younger people watching, but... <laughs> A tape player. Like, oh yes. Like, so <laughs> yes. Tapes. Before I, I before is, I came but... to the Lord, Fred Fred put the tapes of the Bible against the door. This is the days of because you tapes. would lock yourself in the bedroom. I'd lock right? myself in the bedroom. I wouldn't let him come in. He put tapes of the Bible up against the door. He played the Old and New Testament and Deliver Us from Demons by Derek <laughs> Prince. And all that you know, you can't just even when you close your ears, your spirit man keeps hearing all of that. Yeah. And you didn't yeah. want the marriage, right? I didn't want the marriage. I decided he was the problem. He did. <laughs> yeah, right. he was the problem. He didn't. I mean, you did not want the marriage, uh -uh. and he did not like your boyfriend. He didn't like my boyfriends <laughs> at all. Very narrow-minded. So he took our son, and they started. They got spirit-filled, and they started speaking the words and playing the tape, and and just surrounding me with people that mm. that saw the miraculous power of God. And so one miserable morning, I'm sitting there drinking my wine and watching TV, and they've gone to church, and I flipped on this pastor in Houston, and he said, "There's really only one way that you will spend eternity with the Lord. You cannot." staying in the middle and refusing to choose is a choice. And if you do not choose Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will spend eternity in hell. There are only two positions, hell and heaven. And I thought most people I knew lived in the middle. And he said, there's no middle ground. And I got scared and I said, oh God, if that's true, I'll try this, I'll try this. But I want you to know, I don't really believe. And Fred came home that day and I said, okay, I'll move to Dallas with you. But I want you to know, I don't really love you. And what I would tell him is, the only feelings I have for you are absolute hatred. And he'd say, honey, I want to love you, honor you, protect you, provide for you all the days of your life. You're not my enemy. And I said, well, you're my enemy. And he did not listen to what I said. And he just kept on wow. with the Lord. And we moved to Dallas. God set me down in the middle of spirit-filled Christians who could take us where we could get prayed for, healed, inner healing, all of that. And in about six months, I realized how much I loved my husband. And that's been almost 58 years ago. Yay! Yay. Wow. 58 <laughs> years ago. Is yes. that a great story, Pastor? Yes. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, we are out of time. And I want you to know that no matter what you faced in your past or even what you might face in your future, it's not too big or too impossible for Jesus. He can redeem those moments because he is not bound by time. Right. So let him into those places. Allow him to transform your timeline and heal your heart. If that's you today, I want you to call that toll-free number on the screen. Our prayer partners are standing by ready to pray with you. If you prayed that prayer earlier, uh, the prayer of salvation, um, we'd love to send you a free book entitled, Now What? And What Do You Do? And yeah, it's important to get a Bible. It's important to get one you can understand. It's important to uh, try to find a church. I mean, we'll tell you about all of that. But hey, it's a new day for you, and we're excited about it. I want to thank Pastor Troy for joining us at the table. Be sure to pick up a copy of his book, Redeeming Your Timeline. It's available now. And for more on his ministry, you can visit him online at troybrewer.com. As always, we want to know how Table Talk is touching your life. So leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We love hearing from all of you. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, hey, we're excited about what God has for you and your future. Thank you, Pastor Troy. Thank you, ladies. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.